Okay. Suppose we have a function that looks something of this nature. Suppose you have a function looking something of that nature, and what you want to do is you want to revolve it around the y-axis. Okay, when you revolve that around, uh, you know, the y-axis, you end up with that shape. Now, here's the tough part, okay? <laughs> so, if we're going to use the washer method, and we slice this, okay? And we're rotating this all the way around. Use the washer and rotate that all the way around. You're you're gonna cut it like that, right? You're gonna slice it like that. You get this rotation of the solid, whatever, whatever it looks like. Okay, hard to visualize. We've already talked about this. <clears throat> Here's the problem. This is the whole reasoning behind we're gonna do what we're gonna do. DX or DY? <laughs> Down the middle, this is X equals zero. That's F of X, right? What's the outside? It's also F of X. I mean, the same function that creates the inside of your washer is what creates the outside, correct? And the reason why it's a problem is if we set it up and we do pi times big R squared minus little r squared, big R squared would be f of x, that quantity squared, minus little r squared, which would be f of x quantity squared, and you get pi times 0, which is 0. And you can see it, it doesn't work out. So, what we do instead, see if I can draw this, is instead of cutting it like that, because we, we recognize, okay, that, that's really problematic. We cut it like this. We cut a rectangle, and we spin the rectangle over to the other side, like this. And when we do that, can you see how you're going to get this cylindrical shell? Yeah, and so, you know, if you cut then another one right next to it, like a green one, I could show the difference in color here, and then you were to you know, spin that one around, that would be just a little bit you know, larger in diameter, right? And we'll just keep on doing that. And, and the fact is, is when you take this piece as, uh, you know, this cylindrical shell and you unravel it, what shape do you get when you unravel it? You get a rectangle that has just a little bit of width to it. Now, the width was what we cut, right? That was... That was this piece right here. What was the width of that? DX, 
infinitesimal means small, whatever that word is, and uh, we say it's dx because we cut it horizontally. Okay, we have horizontal width there. Now here's the interesting piece. The spot where we cut it is a given x value. And that x value happens to be the radius of this, right? The height is the function. But when we take and unravel the label of a can, it's the same as the circumference, right? So the circumference is, what circumference is something? 2 pi r, and in this situation, my radius is simply going to be um, x. Right. And so what we want to do is we want to do an infinite number of those shapes, okay? So here's the formula for volume. Volume is equal to, by using these cylindrical shells, we take 2 pi times the integral from A to B of Yep. So, this is important. That's the distance from your center. Really what we did is we, we did this. In order to get that x, we took this x spot, and this was our rotation was 0. We did x minus 0. If we're not rotating it around that, it's going to change. So, we can like this formula all you want. The fact is, we shouldn't put an X there. We should put an R. So many calculus books just do put an X there, assuming it's centered around something. Um, we will see an example where that will change. So let's try to see uh, see if we can get two of these all the way through. Okay, Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. So Find the volume of the area bounded by y equals 2x squared minus x to the third and y equals 0 revolved around the y-axis. Let's figure out what the shape looks like. 2x squared minus x to the third. Let us graph it. I'm going to factor it. What can I factor out? An x squared, and I get 2 minus x. So this is a cubic function, correct? I'm going to draw just a small graph of it right up here. It looks like it has a double root at 0, and it has a single root at negative 2, or positive 2. So a small graph of this function, it's going to look like that. Okay. We're concerned about this space right here that's bounded between the function and y equals 0. That's what I'm going to take and revolve. So I will draw a bigger representation of that. What is this location? 2, we saw from our intercept. We know that that's 0. I'm going to draw a corresponding graph over here. Not that that matters, but that would be negative 2. Can you use a washer method? No, because your outside and inside portion of the washers come from the same function. Therefore, that does not work. So, let us use a different method. Let's cut a rectangle. And then let's spin that rectangle around.
I don't pretend that that's the best shape. But, do, do you get the idea? Okay, it's a cylindrical shell. Let's unravel the shell. Eventually, how many shells will I have in this shape? An infinite number, thus we use the definite integral. What is the width of each one of these rectangular pieces? dx, that's what I cut here. I cut a width of dx, so we will say that uh, this width is dx. Now, I have a next part. I want to look at this height. Well, the height of this rectangle that I've unraveled is the same as that, right? The height of the function. So, the height is 2x squared minus x to the third. Now, all I need is the length of that rectangle. The length is the same as the circumference, as you said, which is 2 pi times my radius. Let's calculate. Ooh. Don't they know? Okay, now, <clears throat> this is, shh, the spot that we picked here is some x value that exists between 0 and 2. Reason, reason through this. Suppose I cut this for an x value of 1. What would the radius be? 1, because you had 1 minus 0. All right, well, <laughs> if you were to read backwards. Okay, so 0, so you did 1 minus 0 was 1. If I picked a spot, say, 1.5, the radius would be 1.5, because you did 1.5 minus 0 where I started from. Notice if I were to rotate this around, say, instead of y equals 0, if I rotate around y equals negative 1, then instead of a radius of 1, you would have a radius of 2. So you have to do, again, your right minus your left. So that's why it works out where this is simply x minus 0 or x. It's whatever x value we've chosen that exists between 0 and 2. We have all of our parts. Let us integrate. We have the integral of the volume of this piece. We're going to do an infinite number of these. The volume is equal to 2 pi. I could put that out front times x times my function, 2x squared minus x to the third, dx, and I integrate it from what? 0 to 2 because... I will construct an infinite number of those rectangles in that shape and then swing them around to make my shells. Now, as you look at this integral, what's nice about this integral compared to the ones you've dealt with before? You don't have to square it, do you? I mean, this is this is a pretty nice integral to deal with. All we do is just, you know, we got 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x to the third minus x to the fourth dx. And that's that's child's play, right? And we, that's we've done that so many times. No. That's the integral. Let's evaluate it just for good measure. What's the antiderivative of two x to the third? X cubed? Oh, what x to the fourth I'm sorry. X to the fourth over two minus x to the fifth over 5, evaluated at 0 and 2. We know what 0 comes out to be. Common denominators are going to be 10. So I've got 10 as my common denominator, 2 pi times, what is 2 to the fourth? 16 divided by 2 is 8, or 80 over 10. Minus... Uh, what is 2 to the 5th? 32 over 5 or 64 over 10. Looks like I didn't need to do over 10. I could just do over 5. It doesn't matter. We'll reduce it. 
So I get two pi times 16 over 10. Is that correct? Uh, which gives me 32 pi over 10. By the top and bottom by 2, we get 16 pi over 5. That is the exact volume of that region. You cannot, you, you can plug this part right here into your calculator. You may not check to see if that's correct. I mean, that's that requires that you're drawing and everything else is there. So, All right, uh, we try one more. Okay, you guys did well. Okay, very similar situation. We're going to revolve around something else. Okay, so uh, what shape is x minus x squared? Parabola that goes down, and it looks like I have intercepts of 0 and 1. Very good. So we'll take our drawing. Instead of rotating around the x-axis, I can rotate it around. All right, so that's 0, that's 1, and I have this 2 here. Oh, better draw a little bit further. It looks like I'm taking this shape right here. I'm going to slice it. I'm going to swing it around over here. Okay, get that shell, unravel it, unravel it, what shape do you get? Get this rectangle, what's the width of the rectangle? DX, it's infinitely small, what's the height of the rectangle? Now, this is really important that you understand this, okay? If I chose this point and it would say one half, what's the radius? Two minus one half or one and a half, right? So you can't just say that x is your radius. Yes. It's always the right minus the left. It doesn't matter what's inside or outside. What matters is what's on the right and what's on the left. So no, you had no, no, no. Good question. Very good question. This took me a little while to figure out. First time I did it, I did it incorrectly. Um, when I was working through these type of problems. Right, so this is my drawing. So this is my primary region, my area where I start with, and this is my rotation. So I always look at what's on the right minus the left. So you have, you can't, this is not my primary area over here. This is a result of the rotation. So I do not consider that at all in terms of my, um, in terms of my setting up of the integral. So that's what we're going to do here. We have x equals 2, and we have x. And so if I subtract them, what is the radius? 2 minus x. So therefore, the length of this is 2 pi times 2 minus x. That's now my radius.
Yes, you always look at where it started from. So this is my original area that I had, and this is my rotational spot. I do not consider that at all when I set up the problem. When I set up my integral, I always focus on this. I take the right minus left, 2 minus x will be my radius. So I now have, once I get this drawing, everything follows from there. I have the integral from, my area is drawn from what region? From 0 to 1. And I have the volume of this three-dimensional shape now, which is 2 pi times x minus x squared times 2 minus x dx. So that does look a little bit different from our previous one in that you do not have your radius equal to x. So now all I need to do is uh, foil that out. 2 pi times the integral, 0 to 1. Alright. So, we get uh, 2x uh, minus x squared minus 2x squared plus x to the third dx. Which is going to be 2x minus 3x squared plus x to the third dx when I combine like terms. Correct. All right, let's integrate 2 pi. What is the antiderivative of 2x? x squared. What's the antiderivative of 3x squared? x to the third. And what's the antiderivative of x to the third? So I'll write things in terms of Plug in one and you get four fourths minus four fourths plus one fourth. You can see that those cancel two pi over four or Isn't that so nice? Pi over 2, it's like, just feels like 90 degrees. Makes you feel like summer, right? <laughs> Come on! That was the best joke I've ever had! I, I just thought of it right then. I was like, 90 degrees in summer! Do you get it now? Pi over 2 radians is 90 degrees! 90 degrees outside, summer. Oh gosh. Wow. Okay, let me get your assignment. Okay, folks, those are around the y-axis. Give them a shot. Hope you have a great day. Great day for track meet. Come over to Austin. Tomorrow we will do uh, the next assignment. And we will do 15, 17, and 18. That's tomorrow's. Have a good day.